Hello, good afternoon. In this episode, I'm gonna be turning this tree root into a bushcraft shelter. I'm gonna to need to build a raised bed to keep me off the ground and keep me warm. I'm gonna be getting a hot fire going, cooking some food, and I'm also gonna be building a rocket stove. Thanks for joining me, and I hope you enjoy the episode. First things first, I'm gonna to need to build a raised bed. Temperatures are dropping down to around four degrees Celsius tonight. With the wind chill, that feels around about zero degrees Celsius, but it's not gonna freeze. Nevertheless, I still need to raise my body up off the ground because this ground is going to be really cold and it's going to sap my heat, my uh, temperature, my body temperature and bring it down. It's really boggy, it's kind of boggy and clay as well. So I've got to cut some wood and build myself a bed. For that, I'm just going to use a saw. quite warm after that, don't need my hat anymore. From experience, when making raised beds like this, I prefer to make it two logs deep, because when you're sitting on it, your legs are a bit more at a right angle. If I just did the one log down there, then my legs, when I sit down, would be up here, and it'd be really uncomfortable. Normally I'd use thicker diameter logs than that, but I'm a bit strapped for time today, so that's, that's what I do. I go two logs that depth. I'm also then further up off the ground, which means the less chance of the ground sapping my heat from my body. Now the problem is, is if you don't stake it in, you get this and the whole bed starts to do some racking, which is where it basically rocks back and forward. So you have to peg it in. And because this it's all over the place, it's really slopey here. What I'm gonna do is stake in the back corners first, just here. And then that's, cause that's where it wants to roll. And then I can relax a bit and just peg in the rest. <clears throat> As for stakes, I make them, the length I make them is all dependent on how soft or hard the ground is. If it's really quite hard ground, then I don't need to make them very long because I won't have to hit them in very, very far. This is so soft. So if I tap these, they're gonna go in really fast. I'll show you. See? So I won't even need to saw these. Sometimes in the summer, I'm building a raised bed. You have to saw them level. It's a little bit uneven, but it doesn't matter so much because I'm gonna be putting a sleeping pad on it. You know, that'll, that'll even it out quite a bit. If I was sleeping directly on this, or with a small thin foam pad it's not as comfortable but i always test lie on it just to see where the ridges are on my back and that's not too bad word of advice when you're building these they take easily well over an hour to build because you have to source all the materials and there's so many sawing cuts that you've got to make they take a lot longer than you think to build so if you're doing an overnighter in winter and light's not on your side just remember these take time Long time since I've had a fire here.
built myself a little platform here and I've got these two sticks that I can lift up to allow oxygen and air into the fire. Gonna light the fire with this EG Survival Ultimate Match. It's literally <laughs> like a grenade. It's got a ring pull. Gonna wear a glove. Never tried one of these before. I've seen videos of them and they look insane. Let's give it a go. Wait for it. Oh my God. <laughs> That's insane. That would be great for seriously wet conditions if you were in a survival situation. In fact, I'm gonna chuck bigger logs on there. That is unbelievable. <laughs> Whoa. Just chuck the logs on there. They're, they're all wet, these ones. I don't think it matters because this is just pumping out. Look at it. Is that is ridiculous. What? <laughs> I'll tell you what, I would want that on my in my kit on a, if I ended up in the proper survival situation. That is unbelievable. Wow, it's still burning so much. Look at that. I mean the fire's lit. Wow. <laughs> That's cool. This wood is soaking wet. I deliberately collected wet wood for that to see if it would work. And it sure did. Okay, that was awesome. We're gonna let that fire build up now. That's gonna be our cooking fire. But I would like a nice tea, cup of tea, and we're gonna do that by making a rocket stove. A few different ways of making a rocket stove. I've just cut a piece of ash, it's not amazingly dry, it's dry, but it's starting to break down. And I'm gonna make mine this way. I'm gonna split this twice. Sit it together just to check I've got it right. Okay. Just check that fits there, down the middle. That one kicked off a bit. Just to piece it together again. Bit of a jigsaw. So I've got my four pieces roughly split up. Now what I'm gonna do is lay them out like this. And I'm gonna cut a notch about a third of the way up from the bottom, all the way along here, just, just in here. It's a bit tricky because it's on that kind of raised area. Right. There we go, just to get it going. You can see there's my cut. Now I'm gonna batten down the top of my knife to the depth of the, what the cut is. And just... That's about as much as I'm removing. Got this little ledge, this lip here. You can see I've pieced it together there's a hole that side there's barely any cracks that side there's a nice cavity now normally I would tie some snare wire or just thin wire pike trace wire is quite good fishing trace material you could you, you tie it around here and then you start a fire inside and you've got your stove but I don't have any wire on me and I'm not going to tie paracord around here because it will just melt I will show you what I'll do first before I do that Air can get in the top so the fire can get out, but there's no way for the air to get inside. So, I'm going to make a hole. I'm looking at the edge where there's a natural hole here, probably. Yeah, that's going to work. So, Big hole there, that's where the fire's gonna come out. And then a little hole here, kind of like a little bird box. And that's where the air can go in.
to face, have this facing the wind, which is this way. I'm going to just push it in the ground a little bit. There we go. Now that's going to start sucking moisture up straight away, so I need to get this lit. What I've done is just curled up small pieces of birch bark and plonk these in the bottom. Give me blame. Might as well just light it from here. There we go. My other bits of birch bark, super fine twigs. These have to be really dry, this first bit. Everything needs to be really, really dry. Place these little stones just on the top here. Look at that. And then those, my kettle's gonna go on top of those stones. In theory, There we go, we have flame. Pop the kettle back on, let it cook. Losing night now, kettle's nearly boiled and I'm managing two fires, so a little bit tricky. Uh, but I need to get a shelter set up before the light goes. My theory is I'm gonna make like a tarp shelter somehow going over this old ash tree here. No idea yet how I'm gonna do it, but we're just going to figure it out, see what happens. I've still got the blue cordage from the, the hunting trip I did with the pulleys on them. So we will see how it goes with that. I'll make use of it somehow. We're nearly boiling. Burning well. I'm not having to blow or add oxygen at all now. So I can actually feed sticks in the bottom here instead of having to take the kettle off all the time now. I think we're boiling. Yes! Still not burnt much on the outside as well. You can see there's still a lot of burn left. Gone free. I think it's like a mulled spiced tea or something. It smells like mulled wine and cinnamon. So we'll go with that. I'll leave that there, we'll see how long it burns for. Just tying an adjustable guy line hitch. What I do is I've gone round this stake here, take the tag end, go over the main line once and underneath, put it through, twice and underneath, put it through, and then once around the main line further up above the knot and then back through as a loop because it's a quick release pull that tight that's now not going to slip but i can adjust by pulling this and then loosen the knot and the, the guy line by pulling it down like that makes it loose and adjust it by holding the other line and pulling it up like that so i'll tweak the rest of the top later That's it, I'm running out of light. I've got plenty of room underneath the top there and my bed is set up. So now I can relax a bit. It's quarter to 5 p.m.
I've done a makeshift tarp over the tree root. I've got the protection from the wind from these walls, the tree root itself, and a tarp above me. And there's the bed, which is directly underneath the tarp. So we should be good. Going for a, a, an easy, low maintenance meal to begin with. Just a jacket potato wrapped in foil. I'm gonna place that, rake a few coals over here. Place that there. Probably rotate it every 15 minutes for an hour. I need to build this fire up now as well. Almost forgot my tea. Oh, that's nice. I just hope that tree root doesn't split more and roll on me in the night. I think I'll be okay. But yeah, I'm underneath the tarp. That's the main thing. So what I've done is I've dropped this corner of the tarp lower than any other corner. That way when it rains, it doesn't sit and pull and puddle in the middle. It follows the lowest point because water's going to do that. It runs towards the corner and then it drips down. I've done it a number of times, setting up a tarp perfectly even and what happens is it just sags and it pulls when the rain gets on it. So if you drop one corner a lot more than the others, it encourages the water to go that way. Which is away from my bed as well, as far away from the bed as possible. As well as having the adjustable guy line hitches on the stakes at the end into the ground, I've also got these little rope roller clips on the tie-up point, some of my tie-up points. And that way I can just pull the tarp tight each time as the tension goes, which it inevitably does over time in the night when it's raining, I can just pull that and it locks every time I let go. And if I need to loosen it, which I won't, I can do it that way. But every time I can just pull till it's really tight and then it locks off. It's ideal, really useful. While food's cooking, the set up the bed. It's like being in a cave down here. Before I uh, lay on the mattress, I'm just gonna get rid of any sharp bits, flatten it all off, any pokey bits. So I don't want to pop my mattress. Normally, I would stick a little like flat roll mat underneath it, but I've done this before. And here are the old tawny owls. Every 15 minutes, just rotating the potato. Uh, we've got some good coals there now. I'm not putting it, there's some coals underneath it, but I'm not putting it directly in the middle or near the flames because it tends to just burn it. I mean, the outside of the potato is going to be fairly burnt anyway, but I can squish the, I can push the outside and it makes an indent, so I know it's cooking well. We're nearly there. So I've got myself a nice ribeye and also the little spice kit that I used in the previous episode. Going to throw on obviously a little bit of salt and some dried chili flakes mixed chilies. Perfect. I'm using a raw time pan for cooking this time. I do like this because it's got a lovely long handle. We got me asparagus tips. Oh, potatoes hot. 
but it's soft. Let's have a look. Oh, that's lovely and soft. I can tell. Yes, please. Whew. Melt a bit of butter on the jacket potato. Can't have a jacket potato without a nice gob of butter. In my cave, my tree root cave. I've got, I didn't bring a fork, so I'm eating with a spork. That potato is lovely. I can just scoop it out actually with the spoon. Folks, this is good. I'm gonna tuck in and enjoy it. And I will catch up with you guys in a minute. Right, coming up, 10 p.m. folks. Getting late. The wind's picked up a little bit. Temperature is now, I think about two degrees it was saying on the weather app. Uh, it's not due to freeze, like I say. It's definitely chillier than what it what it was forecasted, <clears throat> but the wind isn't so bad at the moment, which is good. We've had a tiny sprinkling of rain. Other than that, it's been it's actually a really good night, and it's due to be quite a good night. So, right, let's see if the thermos pops. Oh. <laughs> so far, so good. I'm not a fan of thermos directly on sticks like this, and I definitely wouldn't recommend it to those thinking about it. It's only where I know I'm light and small and I've got a puncture repair kit in the in the Thermarest uh, packet stuff sack that I, I, I can repair it if it does puncture. It's nice to be off the ground though. Obviously if I roll too much, <laughs> I'll be on the deck. Going without a pillow tonight, just use my arm. I tend to side sleep anyway, so this is fairly normal for me. I've got my jacket actually, I could use that. Obviously I've got to come and turn the camera off. Folks, thank you for watching if you still are this far. I'll let you know if there's any drama in the evening tonight. But other than that, I'll see you guys in the morning. Morning. Bit of a broken night, but that was expected. Lovely morning, the sun has just risen from the looks of it. Didn't get wet from the top, which is nice. It's been rained on, it, it's damp, and there's some leaves on it from some of the wind, but we're all good, we're all strong. Still standing, which is, which is good. <laughs> Gonna get the fire going. Uh, boil up a tea because I'm desperate for a cup of tea and cook some breakfast. There wasn't much room to maneuver on the bed, but it was still comfy and I was still warm. Very conscious of popping this thermorest, so I want to get off it.
was a nice breakfast. My stomach is full and I'm satisfied. Now I need to take down this shelter, even though I could, I could leave it up. I'm going to take it down. Um, I really enjoyed that though, camping under the tree root. I'm thinking I might do another one with a different style shelter maybe. Um, just because it's got a really good backdrop and it just protects you, well, it protects me from pretty much all the sides. There's a few gaps where the breeze did come through last night. But other than that, this, you know, I haven't really camped at the bushcraft camp here. I think this might be the first one actually. So yeah, stay tuned. Hopefully do some more camps here. Potentially get some sort of roof over that. I mean, it's quite nice to have a tarp because you can just change the, the, the shape of it. Right, let's get this tarp down. <clears throat> it's all quick, everything's quick release. So I've only got to pull, pull some loops, remove some stakes and we're good to go. I have to dry this out at home, <laughs> as usual, with my uh, winter camping gear. That's it. I'm all packed up. I'm ready to go. It wasn't too much of a hassle, really, packing it all up because it's just <laughs> the tarp. The harder bit was actually building the raised bed. That's what took the longest. But now it's built, I'm going to leave that there. That way, if I want to come and sleep over here again, I can just put the shelter up and I don't have to build the bed again. Well, that was good fun. I enjoyed this one. If you like this sort of thing, then feel free to hit the subscribe button. There's plenty more to come. And yeah, I'm looking forward to getting back out in the woods next week. Thank you for watching and I'll see you guys next Friday around about 5pm UK time. That's, oh yeah, I forgot. We're trying to go for Friday uploads. I figure TA Fishing has been on, our other YouTube channel has been on Fridays for 13 years now. I think about 13, 14 years, every Friday at 7pm. TA Outdoors, I would kind of, the last three years since 2020, I've just mixed and matched when I put it up and you guys have all said like, when, when, is, the, when is the next episode up? You don't know. So we're going to aim for Fridays around about 5 p.m. UK time. Uh, obviously, if, I'll let you know on social media if I can't do those um, or if I miss a week, etc. But yeah, I figured that way Friday is the TA day. You've got TA outdoors and then you'll have an episode of TA fishing straight after with Dad. So yeah, that's what we're going to aim for Fridays, 5 p.m. And feel free to subscribe to both channels and I'll catch you guys in the next episode. Cheers for watching.